smashing right hand by Johnson is followed by a jolting right up Champion Johnson is getting a $60,000 guarantee for this title offense. By far the biggest ever made today. Jeffrey's guarantee is $40,000 plus the astronomical figure of $75,000 for signing with Rickard for the fight. 1,500 Never Say Die fans crashed over the fence when there simply were no more seats to be sold. In Rickard's financial breakdown of the fight, these same 1,500 crashers were listed as complimentary. In the previous round, Johnson relentlessly pursued Jeffries all over the ring. Here in round 15, he rushes Jeff against the ropes and lands a hard right uppercut. He follows it up with three left hooks, and Jeffries goes down for the first time in his entire professional career. The crowd leaps to its feet at the shock of what's happened. Jeff rises and gets hit with a smashing left hook that sends him out of the ring. Jeff keeps second with the help of a fan, lifts him to his feet. Johnson rushes Jeffries where he floors Jeff with a paralyzing right to the head. Rickard steps between the two fighters as Sam Berger, dark dressed in hat, rushes in and stops the fight to save Jeffries from further punishment. This startling conclusion puts an end to the most dramatic heavyweight championship fight in the last 75 years. This fight is so rich in texture if you love history. There were 20,000 people were there, 2,000 members of the press. For the first time, women attended, and Tex Rickard, who was the promoter, asked the president, President Taft, to referee. He said no, and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who penned Sherlock Holmes to referee, he turned him down, and so Rickard, the promoter, refereed himself. Because Jack Johnson insisted he referee. He's the only man he said could look after him. He looked after him, but in the 15th round, he couldn't look after Jeffries, as you saw. How about women? For the first time, the and first how, about, time they how built, about they built boxes for the women with curtains? Fifty dollars a ticket, the whole kit and caboodle. Hey, fifty dollars is a lot now. This is yeah. 1910. These were tax dollars. This was important. And the introduction of past champions in the, the ring, which later ever. became a big part of boxing. First time ever, they brought in John L. Sullivan, James J. Corbett, uh, even Stanley Ketchell, and others into the ring. First time this ever happened. No preliminaries. Everything was there. Now the postscript is even as. Jack Johnson was defeating Jeffries. He was taunting him. In clinches, he'd say, don't hug me like that, Mr. Jeff. He'd say, is that the best you can do, Mr. Jeff? And the crowd went silent. After the second knockdown, and there were three in the 15th round, after the second knockdown, the crowd had started, hollered, stop it, stop it. They couldn't envision their hero, the head of their crusade, the Invincible, being beaten, and he had been all fight. Rickard stops it when everybody comes in the ring from Jeffrey's corner, including James J. Corbett. Postscripts, there are riots in every city. The whites riot against the blacks because they can't believe... Just couldn't take it. Be they couldn't believe their hero had been beaten by a black man. What was uh, Jack Johnson's ultimate end? He Ultimately, he loses in 1915 to Jeff Willard, great white hope. And he dies in an auto wreck in 1946, driving from North Carolina to the Joe Louis Billy Kahn fight. He went over the edge of the highway, and as John Lardner wrote, Jack Johnson died last night, crossing the white line for the last time. Well, as we search through boxing history, maybe we've also found the man who invented trash talking. It's Jack Johnson, Jim Jeffries, without a doubt, a fight of the century. Fights of the century weighs in with Joe Lewis. Muhammad Ali, but up next, Jack Dempsey fights for the title here on Classic Sports.